Hi, and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to do a tutorial on uh, the blend command within mid journey. And I'm going to show you the how to use it, what the pros and cons are of it, and possible alternatives to using it. Now, the blend command is supposed to be an easier way of combining images than was previously used within the slash imagine command. And we'll get into that in a little bit. But let's play around with the uh, with the command here a little bit. So what we're going to do is we're going to go slash blend. And then as you can see here, it comes up with two images, two slots for you to drop images into. So for our first example, I'm going to drop a copy of a girl in a business suit. And I'm going to drop a copy of a boardroom that I made here in mid journey as well. Then once you have the images in there, you just press enter and it works away on combining those two images. Now, as you can see here, it combined the two images quite well. It actually redrew the boardroom from a different perspective so that so we could see it here. Now I'll show you what the images look like originally. This was the image of the young lady that I put into the image or into the first slot. And for the boardroom, I used this image here. So as you can see, what it did was it took that boardroom and redrew it to give a better perspective, match the lighting on the young lady here, gave her a different pose, etc. So when it comes to combining two images, this is a very nice way of doing it. Now, I know that one of the uh, uses for this is people want to create avatars, but we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's say you wanted to put this young lady in a different background. Let's say you wanted to put her standing in front of like a Jason Pollock type image. So again, we would go slash blend. We would load in the picture of the young lady and we would load in our Jason Pollock painting. And then we press enter and it goes about its business of combining the two images, just like we did before with the boardroom. Now, as you can see, what it basically did was it took our young lady here and put her in the foreground with the Jason Pollock painting in the background. It did change her coloring just a bit, and I'll pull up her picture here just so you can see what it is. And as you can see, it modified her coloring to match that of the Pollock painting just a little bit, changed the lighting. Not typically wild about the lighting changes that it made, but this is what it came back with. And if you're looking for a quick and easy way of combining two images, this is definitely a quick and easy way of doing it. Let's do one more uh, type of combination here that might be of some use to some people. I find it actually very interesting. So we're gonna go slash blend one more time. We're gonna take our young lady and then we're gonna take a cubism type portrait and put that in there and well let's see what kind of combination this comes up with press enter and it goes off and starts doing its thing all right so we have our photos returned here and as you can see what they did was they then took the young lady and put her into a cubist style painting now i really like this effect i think this is very cool and is an interesting use of the uh, blend command quick and easy cubist portrait that works really nicely. However, the problem is it doesn't work with all types of paintings. For example, if we take the same blend command, and again, we put our young lady in the first slot, and then we do something like put a more Renaissance photo in the second slot, and we hit enter, you'll see that the combination that it comes back with is not what you would expect. At least I would expect it to be a Renaissance type photo or painting of the young lady in the picture, just like it did with the cubist here. Okay, so as you can see, it returned a combination of the two. I mean, here's the original Renaissance type image that I used. And of course, we have the picture of our young lady here, which I'll bring up here in a second. And this is the image of the young lady that we put in there to begin with. I wouldn't say that was the most flattering combination of images that I've seen, but it is a combination, just not 
exactly as I would have envisioned it. But that's the fundamental journey. You never know what you're going to get. Now, let's do one more combination here. Let's say you want to do more of a fantasy type image. So we're going to, again, we're going to bring up our blend. We're going to drop in a picture of a young lady. And this time we're going to drop in a picture of an elf. Now, this is the secondary second image that we're going to pop in here. So let's go ahead and grab that, drop it in there, hit enter, and let mid journey do its thing. Now, as you can see here, it did a decent type of combination. But when you look at the originals side by side with this, you can see that it really didn't get that elvish feel that I was looking for. At least, you know, you, if some people are happy with this and that's great, then blend is an easy and optimal way to just drop in two images, click go and grab your results and run. All right. So now let's take a look at how to combine more than two images. So let's go slash blend. And you'll notice that it only comes up with two image slots here. You can add up to five images in this. And the way that you do that is by moving the cursor on this bottom line. See where it says uh, image one, image two down here at the bottom. Now the cursor is after the first image. And then you want to make sure it's after the second image. You have to make sure that the cursor is after the box where it says, please attach file. And then once you have that, you can click on image three up here, and then that will allow you to put in a third image and you can do the same thing with the fourth and the fifth image. So let's try our combination again. We'll put in the girl, we'll put in our elf, and then just to give it some ambiance, we'll go ahead and we'll throw in a tavern, uh, fantasy type tavern in the background. So let's press enter and see what we get. All right, so we've got our images back. And as you can see, we have our young lady here who is wearing an elvish type outfit standing in a medieval tavern. This is all well and good. And this might be perfect for some people. If it is, that's awesome. Go ahead and use the blend command. You can knock these things out real quick. But let's get into the downsides of the blend command and why you may not want to use it and what a possible option is to making it better for you. As I said earlier, the blend command was a simplified version of the slash imagine command where you could combine images within there. They wanted to have a way to do it that was quicker, faster, and easier for people. And it is, and they did an awesome job at this. However, with that simplicity comes some limitations. One of the main limitations of this is that no matter which way you put these images together, and I'll do this exact same image again, where we'll drop in our images of, put the girl in the third slot, we'll put the elf in the first slot, and we'll put the tavern in the second slot. The, as I was saying, the order that you put these images in doesn't matter. And one of the things that you'll notice aside from that fact is that the results that come back are gonna be pretty much identical to the previous set of results. I mean, it's mid journey, it'll make some changes here or there, but the overall results are going to be identical from combination to combination. All right, so we got our images back from putting the pictures in the opposite direction or a mixed up direction. And as you can see, the results here are pretty much exactly the same as the results we got from the other side. So mid journey doesn't care what order you put the images in. It's going to mix them how it thinks you want to see it mixed. And it's going to apply weighting to the, you know, a weight to those images by its own commands. And that leads me into the second limitation of this. The second limitation is you cannot add any weights to these images. So for example, if I want the elf image more weighted than the other, I, of course, I, I just show you on here, put in our blend command. And if I drag our elf over here and I drag our lady over here, and then I put my cursor here and I try and put in colon colon 
five. And then let's say I want a weight of going, going three on the other image. It will come back without those prompts. It will not let me add weights to them. It will also not let you add other prompts. So if you want to put in, you know, different lighting or hair colors or styles uh, or different ways of manipulating the overall image, it's not going to let you do it. It's going to come back with the same type of image every single time. That's one of the other downfalls to this. Now that we know what the, the positives and the negatives are of this, we have to ask ourselves, how would I go from this to something like this, where it's more of a combination, at least in my mind, this is more of a combination of the two images that I originally started with, with the girl and the elf. So the question is, how do you do this with the blend? And the answer, unfortunately, is you cannot. So let me show you how this works with the uh, imagine com uh, command. Now, the first step when you're using this is you need to upload the images to Discord. So, for example, if we wanted to take our uh, picture of a girl here, we can just drag it over into Discord, let it go, and it will post the image here. We hit enter, it processes it, and then uploads it. Now, what you need to do is you need to go click on it, then you right click on this, and you go to copy image address. Now, when you do that, what I often do is I will copy that URL and I'll show you here what it looks like. If I paste that URL in here, this is what it looks like. I typically will remove the width and the height from the end of this URL just to make it not be constricted to that those dimensions. Make sure I have everything there. So this is the picture of the girl, right? So I'm going to put in girl. If I can type. And then what we want to do is we're going to upload the picture of the elf. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to go over here. We're going to drag in the picture of the elf. We're going to load that in there. Hit enter. Click on it once. Right click on it. Go to copy image address. Go back to our document over here. Elf. Again, we're going to remove the width and height from this. And this is the, the two images that we've loaded into Discord. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to copy this first one. We're gonna go back here to uh, Mid Journey. We're gonna go slash imagine. And we're gonna paste in that first image URL, the one of the, the lady. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a space and then we're gonna copy that other one of the elf and we're gonna put that right after it. Now, if we hit, if we just hit enter here, it's going to do the exact same thing as the blend command. But if we wanted to put some extra arguments in here, for example, if I want a different type of armor on her, I could put something along the lines of intricate elven armor. Now, when we press enter, it will do the same thing as before. Now, one thing you'll notice is that the URLs that Midjourney uses is different from the URLs that we pasted in there. These are shortcuts that used. So what we can do is we can copy this and instead of pasting that long URL every time, we can paste the shortened one. It's gonna to link to the exact same image that we uploaded the first time. So either way works. So let's give this a chance to generate those images and I'll show you where we're at. Okay, we got our images back. And as you can see, I think this is now is a much better combination of the two images that we originally started with, which were the picture of the girl and the picture of the elf. I think this combination works a lot better and all it took was just being able to add in a single prompt. Now we can expand upon these prompts and I'll show you what I did to generate the final image that I created, which was this one right here. Because I wanted something that had a little bit more elvish ears. I mean, I understand these ears here, don't look very elvish. For some reason, Mid Journey has a problem with elvish ears. And if you stick around, I'm gonna show you a trick that will get you half body portrait images pretty much 
every time. That This is one I discovered while I was creating this video and I want to share it with you guys. So let's expand upon this image. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy in my entire thing that I've created before. And I'm going to paste it in here, slash imagine. Whoop. If I can type right, and I'm going to paste in this entire thing. So let me go through this real quick. The first two links here are the two images. Um, well, in this case, what I did was I, I put in an image of the girl and I put in a picture of the tavern that we looked at earlier. The reason being is I wanted the adding the elf image didn't really add anything to the combination. It added a little bit, but th adding the, the intricate armor kind of overrode what the uh, elf girl image added to the image. So I removed the elf girl image and put in something that I can use as a background, which is the tavern image. And then I put in there an intricate elven armor, intricate belt, long straight black hair because it will tend to put in weird type of hair sometimes. Uh, I want to make sure that it understands that I'm using a fantasy type elf scenario. So I put in the uh, prompts fantasy, D&D, &D, which stands for Dungeons and Dragons, and Dungeons and Dragons. And I gave it a weight of four. And then just to really emphasize that I want pointy ears, I put in a high elf from D&D, &D, which again is Dungeons and Dragons. These prompts are all pretty much interchangeable, but I wanted to put in several different variations so you guys can see just how interchangeable they are. I told you I want pointy ears and I want photography style. I want it to be realistic. And then I put in a couple negative prompts here, blemishes and hat. So basically any kind of crown it would put on her or any kind of artifacts that would put on her face, I didn't want either one of those. So that's why I gave it a weight of negative three. Now we press enter on this and we'll let it do its thing. All right, we got our images back. And as you can see here, one of the things that uh, we got were the kind of the ears that I was looking for. They're larger and more elf-like type ears, at least in the images that show ears. And it's putting her in a kind of a fantasy tavern type background. It also has changed her armor up a little bit, um, going more towards the druidic kind of robes or elvish robes that uh, we were looking at earlier. And even though I put in the prompt of straight black hair, as you can see, it sometimes will put in different colors of hair, which is fine. So let's compare this to the image that we originally started with. As you can see, going from this to something along the lines of this one in the bottom left is exactly what, well, at least what I was looking for as far as creating an avatar from this particular image of, you know, taking her and creating her into an elf in a fantasy type tavern scenario. That is my tutorial on how blend works and the pros and cons of it and how you would get around that by using the Slash Imagine or the longer, more intricate version of the Blend tool. Now, I promised you a way of doing half-body portraits, and I'm going to show you that right now because I thought this was pretty darn cool when I <laughs> stumbled across it. We'll do Imagine, and we're going to just type in um, a beautiful woman, and we're going to press Enter. Now, if you type in a very simple command like that, it's going to return you a very simple type of portrait. Okay, so the image has been returned here, and as you can see, it did exactly what we asked it to do. It returned us a picture of a beautiful woman, but these are more headshots, and if you wanted something that was from like the waist up, then you would have, uh, the way I have always done it is I would do our beautiful woman again, and I would do half body shot. And when we put that into the system, the results from this are kind of random. And I'll show you what I mean here when we get our results back. Okay, so as you can see, we typed in a, a beautiful woman and then put in the prompt of half body shot. And again, all we got was headshots back. So if you want something that is from like that top of the head down to the mid waist, it's very difficult to get that kind of shot. However, if you then put in 
Let's go back to our imagine prompt. And we'll go back to our beautiful woman, if I can type. And then we're gonna add in the prompt, intricate belt. You don't have to use intricate uh, belt, but it has to be some kind of belt. You could use black belt, red belt, leather belt, whatever kind of belt you want. But if, in this case, I'm just gonna use intricate belt. Now watch what happens. Okay, so instead of intricate belt, I decided to put in just the word belt. And as you can see, what it did was it returned me half body images. Now you can go ahead and add other prompts and such like that, but just adding in the word belt went from a headshot to a half body shot. Because I typed in the word belt, it wants to show you that belt that you asked it to add. And it went ahead and gave me several belts. Now, if I wanted to, like on this fourth image on the lower right here, you can see where it cut off her head. If I put in a hair color, as well as the belt, it will show me from the top of her head down to the bottom of her belt every single time. Well, I won't say every single time, but because it's mid journey and mid journey does what mid journey does, but I would say at least 90 to 95% of the time, it will give me a half body shot. So I ran across that while I was building my prompts and I wanted to share that with you guys because at least for me, doing half body shots was something I found extremely difficult. In any case, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please do feel free to leave them down in the comments below because I always love hearing from you guys. And if you want to see more, please like, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you in the next video. As always, I wish you a fantastic day. Have a great one, everyone. Bye-bye.